Good morning, everybody. It's at 10 a.m. in Los Angeles, and uh, my name is Xavier. We are going to broadcast for the whole world about skateboarding today. That's what we're going to do uh, during the next uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, depending on if you have any questions. Um, first of all, I want to know if you can see me, if you can hear me. So I'm going to look at the comments. If, uh, if someone is here, can comment me. If you can see me, I would appreciate. And um, in the next uh, couple of seconds, I'm going to introduce to my uh, guest who is Joe Oberling is here. Hi Joe, Joe Heberling, how are you doing? I'm fine, thanks for having me Xavier. So thank you for coming. Uh, the, in the next 30 minutes, we're going to uh, talk about skateboarding and especially uh, skateboarding has become uh, more in, uh, more uh, important because uh, now skateboarding is the is in the Olympics. And we're going to talk about all of this. But first of all, can, um, can you introduce yourself to our uh, uh, viewers and I, I want to say hello to Filiber Filiberto who is here and Filiberto is telling me that we are uh, he's uh, hearing us uh, loud and clear. So Joe, that's your turn. Right. Well, hi. Yes, I, I'll keep it short. Um, my name is Joe Eberling. I've been skateboarding since there were clay wheels. So uh, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years, I guess, <laughs> since the 1970s. <laughs> uh, I've always considered myself a skater. And like all skaters, I'm a teacher because the first thing that uh, happens when somebody sees you skateboarding is inevitably somebody says, can you show me how to do that? And every skater is a teacher. And now we are putting we've we've founded an organization to help everybody become even better at teaching other people to skate. I have one question. Yesterday I was uh, chatting with uh, Cindy Whitehead. Uh, I think you know her. And uh, because in, in, in the captions, I said uh, from uh, Malibu to the Olympics. And um, I about 10 years ago, I interviewed uh, um, uh, Jim Fitzpatrick and he told me that the skateboarding was born in Malibu. And she told me, no, that's not, that's not correct. Uh, Malibu was born in, in Venice. So, I mean, since you are skateboarding since the 50s, can you tell us where, what is the birthplace of skateboarding? Is it Malibu? Is it Venice? Is it somewhere else? I've, I've been skateboarding since the 70s, so I haven't yeah, been around since the 50s. <laughs> I am, I'm looking, I'm staring 60 years old in the face, and I, I'm rushing to get as much skating in as long as I can. <laughs> so um, skateboarding was invented by kids. Yes. If you look at the history of skateboarding, you, you can see that it evolved. It came into being um, through the cooperation of kids everywhere. Kids love the, the feeling of when, you know, when, 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 you, when you're a little kid, if you ask a kid to run, never runs in a straight line. They like to swoop. Yes. They like to go around in circles and wave their arms. And, and skateboarding is as close as you can get to flying without leaving the ground without leaving your front yard or your driveway. So kids invented skateboarding. It's a worldwide sport. It was invented by children everywhere. So now you are the uh, director of the U.S. Skateboard Education Association. What is that association? What are you doing with that association? So I, I got together with some um, equally passionate people who love helping others learn to skateboard and the beginner's level only. And we formed UC and we've put together programs that will make it possible for people who want to teach skateboarding to get a certificate, to be certified, and hopefully to make a career as a skateboard educator. They can, they, you can make a living as a skateboard teacher. Oh, I can imagine that. Uh, how long did you stay in China? I'm right, at the moment, I'm in Olympia, Washington. Okay. I'm and how, how's yeah. skateboarding in China? I mean, what's, what's the level like compared to the U.S. or Brazil or uh, Australia? I mean, all those country the, the level is very high well, if you look at the the skateboarders there's this volcano where there my hands are showing now so it's a volcano it's this huge base yeah and it's all the way up to the tip and you're referring to the tip right there yeah it's, <laughs> not, it's not what most people do so uh at the moment china is trying like crazy to get up to the top they don't have it yet but with their um, go for it attitude and ability to focus, I can see China producing gold medalists um, in the near future. Okay. 
Sounds interesting. <laughs> um, so now skateboarding is going to be at the Olympics. Um, and the Olympics was supposed to start last June, but it has been uh, delayed. So um, how do we know for sure, first of all, that there's going to be Olympics next June? Who can answer that question? <laughs> I would ask the Olympic Committee. They, okay. The word on the street is that it, it's been moved to uh, the summer of 2021. It all depends on the pandemic and how countries feel about sending their athletes out and also how Japan feels about letting people come in. Yeah, yeah. So skateboarding and the Olympics, um, that's a, a very peculiar uh, story. So is it really a good idea to put skateboarding at the Olympics, given the way that most skateboarders won't, you know, follow rules? <laughs> <laughs> that's an that's an image that some people who like skateboarding would like you to have about skateboarding. Yeah, um, most most skateboarders are young children, eight years old, ten years old, and they're used in the driveway and they're used a couple times and then they're put away. That's that's where most skateboarding goes. Um, I would say that there's no way that anybody can represent all skateboarders. Nobody owns yeah. skateboarding. In defining skateboarding, it's impossible to say who can say whether or not skateboarding or whether skateboarding should be in the Olympics. However, I think the skateboarding, it's not, it's not people are worried that I, I have heard people saying skateboarding is going to be changed by the Olympics. It's going to be hurt. I think it's the other way around. I think skateboarding is going to change the Olympics for the better. Skateboarders have a, a different way of seeing the world because they're not on They're not bipedally locomoted. They flow. They don't walk. They don't go jump, jump, jump like this. They whoop, they swoop, and they soar. So I think skateboarding is going to really give a shot in the arm of the Olympics and make it a, a much younger and more exciting uh, event. Uh, uh, Bo is here. He says that I completely agree with uh, uh, Joe. Skate will be skate will change the Olympics more than the other way around. So you, you have some uh, some people that uh, do agree with you. Um, um, I'm, I was asking the question because I mean I'm a long time, very long time skateboarder, and uh, of course I'm I, I think I'm part of the you know the rebel generation, and even though I'm more than 60, I still think I'm a rebel. And um, and I, I know some people are, that totally agree with me, right? That uh, we don't want to you know put a uniform. I I wouldn't go and you know with a uniform. You know uh, I would go and skate or do whatever I whatever I like. But uh, I think you're probably right, and you and Bo are right, that uh, uh, first of all, there, there's a lot of different uh, people doing skateboarding, different, uh, 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 different mentalities. And um, because we are uh, people uh, back with an idea, we think that skateboarding hasn't evolved, but skateboarding has evolved uh, over the past 40 years. So uh, definitely. Uh, um, so now, um, What you want to do is you're going to have a summit on uh, January, January 19. What is, what is the summit about? It's the Skateboard Education Summit. It's a free event online. It's going to be streaming all day long. We have a lot of interesting uh, presenters who are going to be talking about basically two things. If you're a skateboard educator, if you want to teach people to skateboard and you want to make a career at it, here's an opportunity to hear from people who've succeeded at that. And then it's also for skateboard program operators. That's anybody who has skateboarding in their operation. It could be a skate park, might be a, a church school, it could be a camp, it could be a K through 12 PE teacher. So anything to do with people learning how to skateboard, uh, we'll find content there. So we're gonna we're gonna have a, a keynote speaker by the most prolific skateboard teacher in the world, hands down, bar none. This guy has probably taught hundreds of thousands of people to skateboard. His name is Aaron Cairo, and he, he, he runs a, a very unrebellious skateboard channel on YouTube. He's a number one skateboarding guy on, on YouTube. It's called Braille Skateboarding. So he's going to, he's going to talk about how, um, how he failed <laughs> at skateboarding <laughs> as a pro skater. And, but he loves skateboarding so much, he just kept trying. He kept persevering. And Now he's, he's created this mini mega empire of skateboard education. Then we, we've, got, um, we've got a guy who, whose job in Europe, in the Netherlands, is actually to 
analyze the Ollie. So this is guy, I call him the Ollie guru. His name is Raymond and he, he has, uh, he has pressure plates and thousand frame a second, uh, slow-mo cameras and, pre and, and all sorts of really cool sensors and motion suits that he uses to analyze the Ollie. He'll be joining forces with, joining up with Chris Hargrave, who is working to develop ways to teach the Ollie to beginners so that they can succeed step-by-step. Step. Yeah. I, I teach skateboarding and I, I, I get people who are on the skateboard, always little kids, uh, eight to 10 years old is a typical age that I see people starting. And in the first class, they can't even roll yet. And they, they'll grab onto a bar and they'll say, I want to Ollie. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's the first, first thing they want to do. <laughs> right on. So we're, uh, this is going to be a very interesting thing. There's the analysis of the Ollie and how to teach the Ollie. That's going to be an interesting thing for anybody who's a, a skaters would be interested in this as well as teachers who are trying to figure out ways to help their classes learn to skateboard. And then we will have some people from who are involved in the Olympic effort. How do you coach a sport that's not known for coaching? Yes, exactly. Right? Yes. <laughs> or how they're, how they're dealing with that. And there's some very interesting approaches that are coming out and lots of controversy. It should be, it should be really interesting to talk about that. So you said there's not enough uh, teachers. Uh, uh, why do you think there's not enough teacher for skateboarding? What's what's the reason? You know, skateboarding has always been a, a DIY sport. It's it's grown from itself. It was invented by kids. Yeah. Uh, the moves were invented by the skaters. They weren't invented by associations or judges or you know officials. Skateboarders invented stuff, and skateboarders are very inventive. And that also goes with the ethos of teaching. People tend to teach the way they were taught and they were taught by their friends. Mm -hmm. So there's just a tradition of not uh, having instruction in skateboarding, but there are exceptions all over the place. Everywhere you look in the, in the country, just Google skateboard lessons. Yes. And you'll find that there, if there's a skate park, there's, there's a good chance there's somebody there passing out name cards or putting stuff up on a bulletin board saying, you know, skateboard lessons, private lessons, $30. And yeah, I know there's a lot of them. I mean, not a lot, but some of them, yes. Yes. Right. Well, the problem is for a parent, and I'm a parent, I've got, I've got two kids. I've got um, a teenager now and a proto teenager who, who, who do sports. And when they do a sport, the first thing I do is I look for a program. And if I wasn't a skateboarder, I doubt my kids would skateboard because I can't find any skateboard programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that security is the main concern, uh, especially with newbies who don't, does, who don't understand um, um, what speed we can reach. I mean, uh, a couple of times, uh, just a couple of times, but it happened to me that I was uh, riding a bowl in uh, Culver City and uh, uh, one kid just dropped into the bowl and I run into him at full speed, you know, and... Yeah. Uh, Those kids, they, they don't understand how fast we can go. And uh, once we are, you know, in a direction, it's very difficult for us to, you know, avoid, you know, the, the kids or whatever is going into the pool. Yeah, we need, we need to get that. And even to address that issue, we have, we have signage that people will actually read. It's skate mm -hmm. safe signage. Uh, any, any park administrator who sees that will say, yes, we need that. Because it says really basic stuff for the parents of newbies who are bringing the yeah. kids for the first time yes so a good idea is what you're doing i mean trying to teach people or to teach kids at the very first time when they go to a skate park what's what's the basic rule of a skate park how, how are they supposed to behave on on the skate park and that's maybe a couple of minutes you know uh but that that should be a basic thing we just we, we hope that people become aware of the etiquette and the rules of the road in a skate park Okay, so if uh, someone has a question here, I see Bo uh, is uh, commenting a lot. Thank you, Bo. So if uh, uh, someone has a question to uh, Joe, please uh, feel free to comment the question. Uh, another question I have for you, uh, Joe, is uh, so how can people go into the summit on January 19th? What's, uh, what's the best way? Oh, super easy. Uh, you, the easiest way for me to tell you is just go to, go, oh, there you are. Thank you. Just go to our website. On the front page, we'll have there's a registration link that takes you into the registration page. It's free. Okay. Good and, to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a free streaming event, and there it's it's designed so that people who want to make 
a living as skateboard instructors, or they want to just get some ideas from people who've been there, done that. They can they can hear what people are saying and hopefully walk away with um, knowledge that will help them be better at teaching skateboarding. So, Joe, thank you very much for your insights about uh, skateboarding, the Olympics and the teaching and the, the awareness uh, <laughs> level. Uh, so, again, uh, if, uh, if you want to know much more about skateboarding and, and about the, uh, the event, uh, the best way would be to go to uh, that website, ussea.us. Uh, you're going to be redirected to uh, a, a page where you can, uh, you know, uh, put your email uh, address and then uh, you're going to have all the information. That's exactly it. Xavier, thanks a lot for having me. Thank you, Joe. And good luck for the summit. Right on. See everybody there. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.